couple of weeks ago, a friend told me a baseball story that I simply could not ignore, not only because of it having occurred in Pennsylvania, but also because it sounded like too good a story to possibly be true. But it is. And it takes place in Williamsport. It was the inaugural year of the Williamsport Bills, a double-A baseball team affiliated with the Cleveland Indians. The team would be defunct after less than five full seasons, and despite having some notable names in their roster, including Tino Martinez and Clint Hurdle, their most memorable moment came towards the end of that initial season. It was August 31st, 1987, and it was a hot day in Williamsport. The Bills were playing the Reading Phillies. It was a doubleheader, and as such, backup catcher Dave Bresnahan was playing. In later years, Bresnahan spoke to the evolution of what happened that evening. In the minor leagues, he said, when a team is so far from the playoffs as the Bills were, the season can really drag on. The players want to go back home, and when he tossed around this idea, other members of the team had dared him and even helped devise a plan and the pooling off of said plan. For things to happen, a stage had to be set. The requirements were a runner on third with two outs, and in the fifth inning of the first game, the stars lined up, and as Phillies' Rick Lundblade stopped on third, Bresnahan told the umpire at the plate that there was an issue with his glove, and that he needed to run to the dugout in order to retrieve his backup glove. The umpire okayed it, and Dave Bresnahan retrieved a spare glove from the dugout, tucked inside of which was a peeled potato, complete with fake stitches. Bresnahan called for a pitch, a slider low and away. The ball was so low as to be certain that the Phillies batter wouldn't have a chance on swinging for it. Holding the potato now in his hand, Bresnahan caught the pitch in his mitt and threw a wild throw towards third base, so wild that Rick Lundblade made a beeline for home plate and a run. But when he got there, Bresnahan tagged him out, tossed the ball to the umpire and began jogging towards the dugout. By this time, the third base umpire, begun to realize what had happened and was laughing investigating the potato. Unamused, the umpire at the plate ultimately ruled Lundblade safe, and the team's manager, following the end of the inning, benched Bresnahan. Following the game, the manager then fined him $50, but when the Cleveland Indians released him from the contract the following day, Dave Bresnahan decided that he shouldn't be expected to pay the $50, so he left the team manager 50 potatoes and a note instead. In the days following the incident, the story spread and took a life of its own. Bresnahan found himself in front of more than one microphone pretty quickly. Even ardent baseball purists softened up to the joke, something Bresnahan, speaking 25 years after the incident, was thankful for. The Williamsport Bills retired Dave Bresnahan's number 59 the following season, in recognition not only of the stunt now dubbed the Great Potato Caper, but also in having shined the baseball spotlight on an important, albeit not large, market baseball town. Later in 1987, attendees to one of the season's final games could get in for a dollar if they brought a potato. The potatoes were later donated to a food bank. Dave Bresnan is perhaps more surprised than anyone about his notoriety, stating that he had heard of the exact same stunt having been performed in the early days of baseball. In fact, it occurred a couple of times, including once in Williamsport when a catcher from Lock Haven executed the exact same move in 1880. Speaking at the number retirement, Dave Bresnan said to the crowd, quote, Lou Gehrig had to play in 2,130 consecutive games and hit 340 for his number to be retired. And all I had to do was bat 140 and throw a potato. <laughs>